I'm Phil Hall, uh, and my book is called The Small Nouns Crying Faith. The title of the book, The Small Nouns Crying Faith, comes from a poem by George Olpin. It's his phrase. And he's, he's addressing the the amazing particularity of the world. He's, and it's a rural image. He sees some deer um, in, a, in a woods. And he's, a, he's aware he's, that, that, that there are actually deer in a woods, considering all that we're experiencing as humans. Wars, the McCarthy era for him, and, and so on, and bombings and the natural aging and dying process and during all this time there are actual deer sitting in a wood and and so then he then he bursts through and calls them nouns so he brings it into the language to remind us that he's not just talking about deer at all the deer are small nouns crying faith faith with actuality and the small there um, represents a, uh, a, a fragileness, a vulnerability. Um, if the deer are small nouns, they're, they're precarious uh, and their reality is precarious. We change a kind of pesticide and whole species of bees and frogs drop dead. And so small is like poetry. As I said, the best thing about poetry is it's too small to kill. I like to uh, keep things at a very creaturely level in my relationship to the poem as long as possible. I think it helps to keep the poem human uh, as opposed to a, a, a technical thing. And um, it's not only a process issue, it's a form issue. Um, the poem evolving its form from the scratching of a pencil seems um, rodentish to me and not, um, it softens the edges and allows for something more organic, organic and sloppy, and and um, that's how I th I think of a, um, a rural pen as I get up early in the morning, the the geese on the lake or the ducks wake me up or the crows, and I go out and I sit on my back porch. And I want to be quiet, so I'm not going to start up a computer. My wife's sleeping. I sit out there with coffee, and I scratch in my notebook. And uh, I wanted this book to be really immediate, so that a lot of poems start. I'm here up early on the back porch again, so that the effect of the poems is, is, uh, um, shh, it's early. I don't know what I'm going to say next. This is all really basic and simple. And then from that basis, the poems can, can go uh, quite odd. And it also makes words seem different than when they're typed. Typed words are sort of the officialdom that the, that the cursive word takes on when it's going to be shared as if, as if a, a handwritten poem were a naked actor and the type poem is all of the actors on stage in a uniform, right? Somebody chooses which uniform, which font. If I am between various camps, it's because I'm, I'm trying to uh, 
rescue the confession for its humanity and move it. And I think that you can take power from confession and then also take power from things as language. They both have potential and I'd like to use them both. Because I'm not comfortable uh, just telling an anecdote about myself anymore. And I'm not comfortable just playing with language either. So if I'm going to point to things in the world as Open did and say, that's a deer, but the deer you're talking about right now is the language I'm using. I don't want that to be a game because ultimately, where are you going with a poem? You're going to something that speaks about the complexity and the dilemmas of being alive in the world, whether it's as an it or whether it's as a uh, divorced man or a... Uh, I learned from expanding my poems to include critical thought. I learned in the process of making the poems in Kildare that I could literally say anything in the context and it's a it's a it's a great freedom and I find that that people appreciate it too. The, the poem getting closer and closer to what the actual experience of being alive is, is that you don't know what's coming when, but it's all coming at once. And, and a poem that doesn't uh, chisel and leave out as, as, a, as its preceding method, but a, but a poem that invites complexity and inclusion and addition, uh, I find, gets closer to the, the reality. How it's influenced this book is that what I learned about, once again, the power of inclusion has helped me here uh, with these poems because uh, there's a poem in this book about B.P. Nickel that ends by me saying, write anything, which is one of the things that uh, uh, Barry taught us is, and, and Bill Bissett teaches us too, uh, wing it. And where confessional comes into it is that if you really trust that, write anything, and it belongs there, if you trust that, everything speaks and represents the personality. It becomes confessional. You're drawing a picture of yourself. You can't help it. Um, a, a portrait of me or you includes the kitchen sink and everything that the kids threw in it and the bug walking across, the whole thing. BP, fur, agile. At breakfast in Costa Rica, I was talking to Anne about Barry Nickel, the candle under the coffee, the radish rose, and it struck me like error. I am happy, forgive me. Who used to freeze flow, spill pills. I wanted this brain in a bag. My scraggly beard comes in white. The snow machines churning at Devil's Elbow. It took all of the blood in that far city to try to save two letters, BP, the blood of his type. Hearth gods, underchers, last longest without names. The crosshatch, weave, 
the spiral thread of the screw, bivalves, hothouse rot, wise becoming more wise, becoming more wise, the alphabet does not end or begin. Go quiet, not quietly. Write anything. A dancy fence. Do not look up, lick a pencil, begin. It is loon quiet when I stop jerking and go under. A small can of beans explodes on a manifold. All what's left of the fence builder is a fence or two. No one sees a rage tending a day's length of work. The chainsaw overhead, a bayonet, a scythe. My bike upside down, one wheel turning, the planet turning. In my fist, the any stone that confuted Goliath, the son of a bitch. Later, how we joked he was nine months pregnant, 61, the gut on him, the booze, the smokes, emphysema. When he's to term, they, what? Cut a hole in his throat and out leaps tar-brained, long disowned, his half-brother, fear. A slur who used to reverse the charges from cobalt. The superannuated sacerdotal. No such thing as not being at sea. A McCullough. Boated field stones, rails and wire by the rod. His ferocious prime, lopping the cedar stakes and props off even as a small can of brown beans explodes on the manifold. Though all my books list that fence as a sheep fence, it is loon quiet when I stop jerking and go under. A home called current. Chew the lettered wood. Ah, research. Now there's the ears coffin. It's a little visual thing. If you look at the word research, you'll see that right inside it is the word ear. And uh, often people's poems are killed by too much research, I think. so. Ah, oh, research. Now there's the ear's coffin. If you win, your earnestness means more. Each epiphany a bronzed might. But failure tumbles effulgence until anonymous muddles true. Sing we, who threw ourselves overboard to found a unifying, horrifying anonymity, full of bloated crusticles and furred hatches listing. Sing we, names who, rescued into isolation by know-how and fear, call each other on tins of sardines while riding tire swings, torched, spun. A wet hem becomes we, them, becomes me themes. Who took half in the buggy's shadow this blurred snap of us, you, s, a horseshoe toss and a snake writhe? But hey, Mr. In-Between here, pleased to meet you. A suck thumb has snuck off by itself. Half submerged at 4 a.m. in the swampy field, it won't shut up. No, it is not a thumb. It is a tongue, ungulleted, marooned. As we watch, it splits at its tip to brag a little wound mouth all its own. 
freaking slick with awe. Croak. I am here up on the back porch early, have scraped against another lack I didn't know has to be sung of, and left my pen inside. Let it stay inside. Let the valve that memorizes be invited from retirement to compose. By wet guesswork and paced out bluff, a glare aim, nub to nub, without vice or device. Yates on Thur Balali, Zwicky on Quadra. Joy's cudgel taps my crown as I pose for this thick, choppy field board, quick palette knifed at me, of me, that I invented, stole, like Jack, aloft. It is too much, way too much. The rusted culvert trap lines are full of high lonesome yokel names, I deny. First light, Lomish, pies the pantry windows cross and enters. Not yet square, not yet aloof, daddle daddle. The dipper in the water pail, ain't ain't, can't make me, the bare bum on the chair. Hokusei kindling, pulled here by a fro.